Hi everyone, in this video we're going to work on a very simple NACA 0015 airfoil and see what happens if we ask design morphing, which is a technique to automatically morph a design to increase lift, reduce drag and so on, to see what happens if we apply this across the entire section of the wing. Let's have a look. So this is our simulation setup. So this orange box here is what we call the design space, which is the area in which the software is allowed to actually morph the design. And in this case, it encapsulates the entire geometry. So any part of this geometry can be morphed. This will be translated into a number of spline points, which will actually um, distort the mesh uh, during the process of optimization. In this case, the NACA airfoil, NACA 0015, is a symmetric one, so it doesn't generate any lift at all in this reference position because we don't have any angle of attack. We selected the objective to be lift. We want more lift. We want to maximize the lift, and we're going to run three cycles to achieve this. So once this is done, this is what you can see. So interestingly, what the software does is that mainly in the center of the airfoil, it is changing the upper and lower surface. So what's happening, if you zoom in on this one here, if you look at this one, you can see that it's bulging out in the middle and not so much on the sides. And that's actually quite interesting because if you would try and generate lift on the sides of the airfoil, you would immediately increase or motivate the air uh, to take the side cut via the side, so the shortcut via the side, and this would generate more vortices. So it's mainly in the middle that it's lifting the top part of the airfoil, and this is creating more suction effect, which is evidenced by the blue area here, which is low pressure at the top. Um, and at the bottom, we see a, a more pronounced high pressure area um, actually at the uh, bottom side here, at the pressure side. Uh, you have to, this, this is actually flipped around, so they keep that in mind. So very interestingly, the lift went up from 0 to a lift coefficient of 0 0.15 uh, just by changing the midsection of this NACA airfoil. And if we then look at what this looks like, the green is actually the morph model. Um, so if I turn this off, this is the original NACA profile. If I turn on the morph model, you can see that on the side it's still the same. Um, but actually what happened is that you can see that the tips have been lowered just a little to give that extra kick upward by reducing uh, the height of the trailing edge here, uh, to pull that downward and to reduce the vortex by softly generating a small winglet here by pulling down that area. And in the middle, you can really see that um, this, this, this airfoil is bulging out in the middle. So if I hide the, uh, the new one for a sec, you can just see how much the difference is. At the bottom, it's the opposite. So the original one had um, just the, the regular NACA airfoil. So if I hide this one, you can just see how much the new one is actually bulging inwards. You can see this entire valley here um, at the uh, pressure side of the wing. Keep in mind, this is the bottom side. So really interesting to see what this optimization does. This is just a very generic example um, to help you understand what happens. But if you move to industrial applications like a car or a full aircraft and so on, you can really apply this technique to a small portion of the nose of a car or the spoiler on a car or the wingtip of an aircraft of a drone, and you can really see dramatic uh, changes there. We'll drop a link to this sample project so you can check it out yourself. If you have any comments, drop them below. Thumbs up if you liked the video and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.